picture someone you walked by yesterday. Maybe someone you saw last night. A stranger. Someone you saw in passing for one to two seconds. In the dark. If you saw their face in the newspaper, would you be able to recognize them? From just their eyes? In a picture about this size? How about eight years later? Could you do it? One witness claimed he could do just that. And Jamie Snow has been wrongfully serving a life sentence for the last 23 years because of it. My name is Jamie Snow, and I have been incarcerated for 23 years for a crime I didn't commit. I, I still remember that day, and um, I remember Debbie coming back, and she came in and said to turn the news on that somebody had been shot somewhere. And we turned the TV on, and, and, uh, and they were talking about it. And that's how the day was. It's kind of crazy that... Um, you know, they say you're in the safety and security of your own home, right? And the safety and security of your own home is, I mean, it's the worst place to be if someone wants to suspect you for a crime, you know? Being at home with family, it's the worst place in the world. On the night of March 31st, 1991, gas station attendant William Little was shot and killed during a robbery at a Bloomington gas station. The state collected shoe prints, fingerprints, blood, and DNA samples from the scene, but they could not match a single piece of physical evidence to Jamie. Without any physical evidence implicating Jamie, the accounts of two witnesses, Carlos Luna and Danny Martinez, became essential for the state. Unfortunately for Jamie, his lead attorney suffered a stroke that impaired his ability to speak and prepare for trial. Jamie's team did not call a single eyewitness expert to discredit the impossible testimonies of Luna and Martinez. I cannot think of a case ever that was more in need of an expert witness uh, than this one. Luna claimed to have seen the face of the perpetrator coming out of the gas station. Using the hair salon that's in place of the gas station today, this is roughly the view that Luna would have had from his house. 212 feet away. 200 feet uh, is essentially meaning that the face of the of the perpetrator is going to occlude a very small amount of visual angle. It's it's basically you know going to be like the size of a pinky fingernail. Um, it's going to be uh, very difficult to discern uh, the various features of the perpetrator. And what research consistently shows is that when viewing conditions are poor, that's when the probability of eyewitness misidentifications becomes greatly enhanced. Luna would later recant his testimony. Martinez, on the other hand, claimed he came face to face with someone with unforgettable eyes coming out of the gas station. These are the two suspects that Martinez picked out from the lineup shortly after the crime occurred. Here's Jamie. Martinez never made a positive identification of Jamie from the lineups. Knowing that the testimonies on their own would not be enough to charge Jamie, the state utilized jailhouse informants who would go on to recant their testimonies. First of all, they identified everybody Jamie had ever been even in the same prison with or especially in a cell with, right? And that's where your confession witnesses come from. That every single one of them were jailhouse informants. Now we know they got deal. I 
I found the will to survive in my darkest night here in Stateville was after I'd been here for about two months. I'd lost everything. I'd lost my family. I'd lost every hope, every dream, my, my identity. And I really didn't want to go on. I, I made a rope. I put it through the vent in my cell. I got up on my property box. All I had to do was step off, and, and, and it would have been over with. But uh, I heard the, the, the officer coming down the gallery talking about mail call and was calling people's names out. So, you know, I, I, I got down and I turned the light off. I, I wanted to wait till he left. Sure enough, he stopped at my door and called my name and handed me a blue envelope from my daughter, Jessica, with a card signed by all my kids and pictures of all of them. And, you know, in that moment, I knew I, I couldn't do it. I, I, I had to live for them. Uh, I did not want that to be th their last thought of me. And um, hope and innocence hasn't been what has kept me alive, kept me going. It's, it's love, uh, the love for my family and from my family. A lot of people make excuses to not be there for people. Um, but my dad doesn't give any excuse to try to be there for us, no matter what, um, as much as he can. So I think that probably also speaks to his moral character, you know? Um, I think the relationship that I have with him is really important to me because it's really helped me live my life um, with a sense of confidence. You know, he was active in our, in our lives. He wasn't just there to you know, working home or something. Like he made a point to do stuff with us all and was a big part of our life. My only remaining wish in the years I have left is to contribute meaningfully to society, rebuild my life, the lives of my family, my kids and, and my grandkids. And I really have this dream of one day picking my granddaughter up from school and, and taking her out for any sport of ice cream she wants.